volume of Harry Potter. So this is Magic Castle, right? He's an orphan, he goes to the Magic Castle to learn how to be more than normal, right? The Muggles, he has a Muggle family. We're not too happy with the Muggle family. Like as representatives of normal people, they, they have some lacks. Now, of course, the reason for that is that, well, that's what teenagers often feel about their parents, right? They feel, Jesus, these couldn't really be my parents. I must have some other parents who are like together. Those are like magical parents, right? Parents that live in the sky. And of course, Harry Potter has earthly parents. That's the muggles. Harry is actually punished for his virtues. That's a classic story, right? To, to be punished for your virtues. I mean, if you look at the story, the central story in Christianity, the central story in Christianity is about someone who is precisely punished in the worst possible way for the highest possible virtues. And that's what it makes it an archetypal story because there isn't anything more unfair than that. And so it's a limit in a sense. It can't be worse than that. Being punished for being, you know, unworthy, it's like, yeah, yeah, well, at least makes sense. But to be punished because you have your act together and you're a good person, that's real punishment. And that's what happens to Harry. So luckily he finds out that he's magical, which is quite convenient. And off he goes to wizarding school. And that's actually like going and studying the humanities. I mean, it was when they still were, you know, because you, it's through the humanities that you, that you make contact with the magic of your culture. And that makes you more than merely the child of your parents. Because you are more than merely the child of your parents. You're the child of nature and you're the child of culture. And until you understand what that means, understand that you have two sets of parents, like the divine hero always has two sets of parents, you, you can't construe yourself properly as an individual. You're not situated properly in the world. You don't know what your responsibilities are. You can't orient your values properly. And you will suffer for that. Because, as far as I can tell, because life is so difficult, you have to do something that's truly worthwhile in order to justify it. You have an ethical duty to straighten things up. And if you don't do it, you're going to be sorry. So he goes off to the magic castle and uh, he's learning to be a wizard. And he's kind of an interesting character, right? Because he's not really good. And we find out, I think that's because it doesn't have a piece of Voldemort in him. Isn't that what happens? Yeah. And that's what that means is that to be good, truly good, you can't just follow rules. That's, that's very clear in, in the Harry Potter story. And you also have to be able to understand malevolence. And in order to understand malevolence so that you can withstand it, you have to understand that part of you that's malevolent. Because if you don't, you're naive. And if you're naive, you're easy pickings. And so, that's a Jungian idea too, and the Jungian idea is that part of personality development is to understand your shadow. And the shadow is those things about you that you do not want to admit to. You cannot have proper respect for yourself until you know that you're a monster. Because you won't act carefully enough. You know, if you think, well, I'm a nice person, I'd never do anyone any harm. It's like, you're no saint. You can be sure of that. And the harm that you do people can come in many, many ways. And so, if you regard yourself as harmless, inoffensive, nice, well, why do you have any reason to be careful? You're like a teddy bear sitting on a shelf. Even if you throw it at someone, no one's gonna get hurt. But that isn't what you're like, because you're a human being, and human beings are some vicious creatures. And there's utility in knowing that, because it's also the case you know, in the Harry Potter series, Harry could stand up against Voldemort and understand him and speak his language because he was infected by him to some degree. Very, very interesting idea. So, in the second volume, there's this snake that's zipping around there, the basilisk, right? And it lives in the underground. That's chaos. That's chaos. And that's because wherever you are, you're on thin ice, and underneath your thin ice is chaos. And here we are in this unbelievably civilized environment, and everyone's getting along so perfectly. But if any of that fell apart, and it could easily fall apart because it's a bloody miracle it ever works at all, then 
the chaos that's just underneath the surface is going to come up right now. And it's useful to know that because it makes you properly grateful if you really understand it. It makes you properly grateful for the bloody miracle that it is that you can be here in peace. So anyways, there's this snake that's underneath the surface and it's, you know, no joke that thing. It's big and it's ancient. It's always been there. And what happens if you look at it? It turns you to stone, right? It paralyzes you. Well, that's the, more, that's the Gorgon, that's Medusa. The woman with the head of snakes. And if you look at her, it paralyzes you. Well, what does that mean? Well, you're walking through the jungle and a big snake appears. What do you do? You freeze and no bloody wonder because you're a prey animal and that's what they do when they see things that are going to eat them. So Harry Potter decides he's going to go after the basilisk, right? He's going to go out there and face the thing that he's most afraid of. So he does that way down in the depths. And he faces the basilisk and it bites him. And you know, that's, a, that's right, because if you go down into the depths, you can get bitten. Like, it's no joke. And this is a hero story, but the thing about the hero story is it's actually real. The thing that you're facing is actually dangerous. And even though facing it voluntarily might be your best bet, and is likely your best bet, because that's the central story of humanity, that doesn't mean you're going to succeed. It's the real thing. So Harry Potter goes down there to rescue, and he gets bitten, and the bite is poison. And so there he is, dying, which doesn't seem to be so good. And then what happened? Dumbledore character, he's got a bird, right? So he's the wise old man. He's the ruler of the castle. He's the ruler of the magic castle. He's the magic king. You know, he's like God the Father, as far as Harry Potter is concerned. And he has a bird. What kind of bird is it? It's a phoenix, right? And one of the things that's very strange about a phoenix is that, well, it's immortal, but in a strange way, you know, it lives and lives, I think, a hundred years and it gets older and older. And then one day, poof, it bursts into flames and turns into an egg. And then you get a new phoenix. So that's a symbol of transformation. It's a symbol of transformation. The bird is a spirit or psyche. And so here's what it means in part. You know how when you learn a lesson in your life that that's not very pleasant, right? It's not like when you learn something important, <laughs> it's the best day of your life. It's often, the importance of what you learn is often proportionate to just how wretched it is to learn it. You know, you learn things the hard way. You learn things by getting hit because obviously, if what you're doing is working, you get what you want. There's no learning in that and that's happy. It's when you're doing something and you hit an obstacle and maybe you bloody well hit it hard and then you know you recoil and then you down into the depths you go and you have to sort yourself out and you realize that you're you know this particular kind of idiot and that you should probably fix that and that's really annoying and difficult and you know and maybe you're down in the dumps and anxious for quite a while and then you get it repaired more or less and you know you put yourself back together that's the phoenix poof into flames bang egg new you and so you know, that's the ability to learn. Now, learning is a strange thing because you can think of it as just acquiring more information. But you could also think of it, and this is more accurate, as finding out something that you're doing wrong, so that's sort of built into you, like a character, a character element of your character, a presumption of your perception, or a deep habit. It's really built into you. It's a neural structure, right? It's alive, and you have to kill it because it isn't working properly. And the pain that you go through in part when you're suffering because you did something stupid is it's something like your, your, the neurology. So if you want to stop being an alcoholic, not only do you have to stop drinking alcohol, but you have to stop seeing all your drunk friends, and maybe you've had them for your whole life, and you have to have continual battles with your drunk family. And then you have to figure out something to do with that 20 hours that's now like hanging around your neck like an albatross. And so you have to let that whole part of your personality die and a new part has to spring forth. And that's what the phoenix is. And the phoenix is the capacity of the person to transform. And so 
when Harry gets bit by the snake that freezes him, he gets seriously injured. The phoenix comes in, cries some tears in his wound. He repairs him. Bang! He's back to life. And the strange thing is that that's okay with all of the viewers. Now, why would that be? There's nothing about it that's rational. Nothing. Right? Magic castle? That's not rational. Turning you to stone, going down there to face it, being rejuvenated by a phoenix? It's like, yeah, yeah, that's okay. We can, we'll watch that. We'll, we'll swallow it. We'll be completely engaged in it. And the reason for that is because it's a myth. It's about how people, it's a meta story about how to act, about how to conduct yourself in the world, to face the things that you're afraid of that would otherwise paralyze you, to let the death of what is insufficient about you occur and then to wait for the rebirth.